go. Welcome. Um, today we'll do a, a kind of level two class, so um, maybe a little bit more dynamic and perhaps exploring the opportunity to balance on our hands. Um, but don't be, don't be too afraid. I'll, we'll make it so that everybody can come along and of course you just do what you can wherever you are. Um, I actually wanted to start by sharing a little bit about uh, um, my fish pond. <laughs> so um, we have a, a pond in our greenhouse, which sounds really fancy, but it's just a big plastic tub of water, which is used as a, a heat sink. And because it was already there, we were like, oh, we'll just put some little goldfish in it to make it more exciting. Um, so we put the goldfish in um, in the spring one year. And then at the end of the year, um, we don't heat our greenhouse through the winter. So we wanted to get the fish out so that they didn't freeze in the pond. Um, and we tried our very best to, to catch them in a net, but they refused to, to jump in the net. Um, so finally, we had to give up. And we just said, OK, we're sorry, fishies. <laughs> um, we're just going to leave you to your deaths in the winter. Uh, so we left them. And the pond did indeed appear to completely freeze into a solid block of ice. And then in the spring, it unfroze. And the fish started swimming around again. And not only did they start swimming around again, but there were more fish <laughs> than we had put <laughs> in the first place into this pond. Um, which is just, it's, I mean, there are so many examples if we look around anywhere in nature. But um, just such a good reminder that life is so resilient. And maybe that's something that we can use in our practice as a, a kind of um, focus or, or something that we celebrate. When we look at our bodies, they're, they are resilient. Um, and we are able in so many ways to, to heal and transform um, and, and change. And the yoga practice always gives us an opportunity to observe how that is happening all the time. We're going to start today lying on the back. So you can just find a comfortable way to come down onto your back. You can lie down with your legs and arms straight. If that doesn't feel great for your low back, you might choose instead to place the soles of the feet to the floor and let the knees soften in towards each other. Or if you like something else, do something else. So just a way to get comfortable and heavy and soft. You can start to allow your shoulders to relax into your mat. Let the head drop heavy into the floor. You might feel some of the tension around your neck melting away. Let the hips be heavy. Let the belly relax. So we always start by stopping. And that we see if we can give ourselves a moment to stop doing or thinking about all the things that we're doing or thinking about. And when we stop, then there's the opportunity for more of the body's natural wisdom to bubble up towards the surface. For example, it becomes easier for us to be guided by our own breathing. So you can start to feel how your breath moves in the space of your body and feel how your breath changes your body. And feel how simply paying attention to your breath allows you to become more calm, more settled, more at home in your body. Just noticing the breath along the path of the nose, filling the space of the chest, feel the impact of the breath in your belly, maybe right into the pit of your pelvis. And then as we empty the breath, we feel the impact of that emptying in the pelvis and the belly, the chest softens, feel the breath in the throat and the nose, back into space. You might start to cultivate your ujjayi breath here. So we're breathing specifically along the back of the throat. There's then some sound to your breath. I'll just take a few more moments here, listening to the quality of your breathing, seeing if you can attach all of your senses to experiencing your breath. So 
So there's the tactile sensation of the breath moving in the body. You can hear the breath as it rushes in the back of the throat. As we feel the breath in the nose and the throat, maybe there's a quality of smelling or tasting the breath. As we learn to turn our sight inwards, we also see how the breath travels. And we see that the breath moves into those felt spaces in the body, in the chest, in the belly, but also that the breath is carried via the blood to every cell in your body, that the breath brings life to every cell in your torso, in your arms, in your legs, in your hands, in your feet, in your face, in all of your skin. You can feel how you're breathing into your whole self. And now gathering your right knee into your chest. If you had your left leg bent, you might find that you can straighten it out on your mat here. So maybe reaching forward through the ball of your left foot as you inhale. And then as you exhale, you can feel the low belly draw in. Your right thigh can start to hug in closer towards your chest. And just concentrating into that fold of the right hip crease. Keeping your shoulders relaxed. So there's not a, a pulling with the arm so much as um, a sense, again, of just really listening to your breathing and seeing what your breath creates in your body without any force. And then from here, we're going to move into a half happy baby. So you can bring your left hand onto your left hip to hold it in place. Take the right arm to the inside of your right leg and take the right hand to the outside of your right foot or your right shin. And then we'll slowly start to lift the right heel away from the right hip. As you're kind of kicking that right foot up into space, see if you can keep your weight even through your hips. So you might use your left hand to press the left hip back into place so that the hips are evenly rooted on the mat. And continue to reach out long through your left leg especially as you're inhaling. As you're exhaling, the belly scooping in. Maybe you can fold that right thigh a little bit more beside your torso, so really moving into that hip crease again, and keeping the shoulders as relaxed as possible. Your arms provide a little bit of guidance here, but most of the effort, most of the transformation comes from simply breathing and being aware of that breathing. Good, and then we'll bring the leg back towards center. Now looping your hands around the back of your right thigh, you can start to straighten your right leg up towards the ceiling and reach straight up through the ball of your right foot, reach forward through the ball of the left foot. Seeing if you can plug your right thigh bone into the hip socket here. So you could even use your hands to gently draw down on the right thigh bone to settle it more into the hip socket or feel it kind of rooting into the floor. As you're rooting down through the right thigh bone, finding more breath up the back of your right leg so that you can reach up through the ball of your right foot. From here, as you're exhaling and scooping the belly in, maybe you're able to fold the right thigh closer in towards you without increasing the bend in the knee, so keeping the leg as straight as possible. You might find that you can slide your hands up comfortably a little bit higher on the leg, so maybe towards your calf or your back of your ankle. Again, keeping the arms relaxed, keeping the shoulders rooted to the floor, finding breath up the back of the leg as you inhale, feeling that sense of connecting your right thigh bone into the hip socket as you exhale, and scooping the belly in and folding the thigh a little bit closer towards you without increasing the bend in the knee. So all of those movements might be really subtle. Nothing that anyone has to be able to see from the outside. Just feeling the changes as they occur internally so that we can notice especially that even when it looks like nothing is happening, so much is happening. Again. And then we can slowly release, bending the right knee, taking now your left hand to your outer right knee, rolling onto your left side. You can take that right leg over to the left, so just moving into a twist. Your right arm might reach out to the right. You might allow your gaze to shift over towards your right hand, taking the twist in towards the cervical spine. 
Just feeling how the hips can peel away from the floor as the upper back settles into the floor. We get this long spiral through the center body. Gentle little squeezing out of your core. And then we'll come back towards center and change sides. You can take your right leg straight forward. Draw the left knee in towards you. Looping your hands around the left shin here for a moment. The right leg reaching forward on the mat. Especially as you're inhaling, feeling the breath travel through the length of the right leg into the ball of the right foot. As you exhale and draw in through the low belly, move into that left hip crease a little bit more deeply. Keeping the shoulders relaxed again, seeing if you can make this less of a pulling with your arms, more of a listening to your breathing, more of an honoring or a celebration of how much power your breath has how much change your breath can create. And then we'll find that half happy baby. So right hand to your right hip, left arm to the inside of your left leg, and then reaching for either the outer left foot or maybe the left shin. Just do what you can, again, with that left shoulder as comfortably settled as possible. And start to float the left heel away from the left hip, keeping your right hand pressing down into your right hip so that your weight stays even across both hips. So the back of the right hip is still rooted. And then as you exhale and you feel the belly engage, maybe the left thigh can settle a little bit more deeply down beside your torso, more of a fold into that left hip crease. And steady, deep breaths here. And seeing if we can focus in more on on the subtle sensations, the little tiny shifts that are internally experienced, but maybe not externally visible. Like our frozen pond in winter looks like nothing's happening, but life is still happening. And we'll draw that knee back into center. Now you're looping your hands around the back of your left thigh. You can start to straighten that left leg up towards the ceiling. It's really reaching up through the ball of the foot. And first, just seeing if you can plug the left thigh bone back into your hip sockets, really feeling how the weight of the thigh bone drops towards the earth. Maybe we can even kind of draw down with the hands a little bit to settle the thigh bone into the hip. And from there, looking for more space up the back of the leg as you inhale, scooping in through the belly, a little bit of a folding at the hip crease perhaps as you're exhaling without increasing the bend in the knee. Maybe it's available here for you to slide your hands up the leg so that you're looping around the calf or maybe up towards the ankle. Still keeping the shoulders relaxed, heavy to the floor. Breath up the back of the leg to increase the lengthening quality of the leg. Exhale to plug the thigh bone in, scoop the belly in. Maybe exploring a little bit more of a sense of a fold at your left hip crease. And then again, bending the knee, releasing that hold, taking your right hand to your left knee, rolling onto your right side to come into that twist. The left arm can reach out to the left. Maybe allowing your gaze to follow, so the left, uh, the hand, the face, <laughs> whatever that body part is, turning towards your left hand. Seeing if you can peel your hips away from the floor and settle your upper back towards the floor. Just gently wringing out the center body. And then we'll again come back towards center and place the soles of the feet to the mat, squaring up the hips. Inhale to reach your arms up long beside your ears, full stretch back through your fingers. And exhale to roll onto your right side, bringing yourself up to a seat. And from there, rolling over your knees, we'll come right to all four. So knees landing under your hips, the wrists aligning under your shoulders, the fingers spread comfortably wide apart. And spilling weight into the finger pads, into the inner edge of your hand so that we're distributing the weight evenly across the hand. 
And then from here, moving through a few rounds of cat and cow as you inhaling, lengthen the belly, lifting the sits bones, lifting the chest. Exhaling to round, pressing the mat away from you. Kind of balloon up through your back body, hug the belly in. Inhale again to stretch the top layers of the belly long, reaching your ribs forward, lift the sits bones, lift the chest. Exhaling to round, tailbone scooping down, hug the belly in, rounding through the back, let the head drop heavy. A few more rounds, just following your own breath, making it as fluid, as water-like as possible. Exploring every area of your spine. So we tend to think of the spine as one thing, but we could think of the spine actually as like 26 different joints. 26 places where bones meet and we are able to find softness and space and fluidity in each of those 26 spaces. We'll inhale to come back to a neutral spine. From here, you can turn your right fingers out to the right and then turn the fingers so that they point back towards your right knee. So your right thumb is towards the outer edge of your mat. And then we're gonna move through a cat and cow again. So as you inhale, you lengthen the belly, lifting the sits bones, lifting the chest. Exhaling to round the back, pressing down through the hands, hugging in through the belly. Good. Inhale again to find length. You might find that you could bend your right elbow here even a little bit more for more space in the front of the forearm. Exhaling to round, hug the belly in, pressing down through the hands, rounding the back. And once more, inhaling into that cow shape, maybe a little bit of bend in the right elbow, stretching the belly long, and exhaling to round back into cat. And we'll inhale to a neutral spine, turning your right fingers forward, and then changing sides. Left fingers first out to the left and then back towards your left knee. And from here, inhaling to find length in the belly, lifting the sits bones, lifting the chest. Maybe you can spread the sits bones wider by pressing out through the knees. Exhale to round, hug in through the belly, tailbone reaching down, the head really heavy. Inhale again to find length, maybe some bend in your left elbow if you're able, more space in the left forearm. Exhale to round. And once more, inhaling to find that long space in your front body. A little bit more stretch in the left forearm if you can bend the elbow. And exhaling to round. And we'll inhale to come back to center, left fingers pointing forward. From here, taking your hips up and back, moving into downward dog. And root down through the hands. Again, finding weight through the whole surface area of the hand, so inner edge of the hand rooted, pressing through the fingerprints, seeing if we can send the hips a little bit higher up and back, stretching out the center body as the hips reaching up and back. Maybe you can send your heels a little bit down towards the floor, so find more space through the backs of the legs. And then we'll inhale to ripple forward into a plank, bringing your shoulders over your wrists, or maybe even forward of your wrists. And holding this shape for a moment, see if you can spread your shoulder blades really wide on the back, and a little bit of a ballooning quality in the upper back so that the shoulders are stable. A little bit more hug in the low belly, lift through the inner lines of the legs, legs helping to hold you up here. And then exhaling to find your way down, you can come all the way down, or maybe just to chaturanga. We'll inhale to cobra or upward dog. And then exhaling to take the hips up and back, moving into a downward dog. Yeah. We'll inhale here to reach the right leg up and back. And then exhale to take your right foot down behind your left foot so that you can tuck your toes right onto the back of your left heel. I'm gonna to inhale to come up onto the ball of the left foot, lift the hips up high, and then exhale to reach the left heel down and see if you can press with your right toes to send the heel a little bit farther towards the mat. Again, we'll inhale to come up onto the ball of the left foot, lift the sits bones high, exhale to settle the heel down, pressing down a little bit with your right toes. One more time, inhaling to come up onto the ball of the foot, lift the hips high, Exhale to send that left heel down and press down with your right toes. And now we're gonna to inhale to come forward into plank, keeping that right foot crossed over your left ankle. Maybe you can again kind of push back with the right toes. Exhaling to come to a chaturanga. And inhale towards upward dog, rooting both feet now. And then exhale to come over your toes to a downward dog. Good. And try that on the other side. So inhale to reach the left leg up and back. 
Exhale to bring the left foot down towards the back of your right ankle. So you can tuck the toes onto the back of the ankle. Inhale to come up onto the ball of the right foot. Lift the sits bones high. Exhale to settle the heel and kind of press down with your right toes. Inhale again to come up high onto the ball of the foot. Sits bones reaching up. Exhale, stretching down through the back of the right leg. Keep reaching up through your sits bones. Once more, inhale up onto the ball of the foot. Exhale, reaching the heel down, pressing down through the left toes. And inhale onto the ball of your right foot, coming forward into a plank. See if you can kind of press back through those left toes. Exhaling, chaturanga, still with the ankle crossed. Good, rooting the tops of the feet, inhaling to come into upward dog. Exhaling to take the hips up and back, moving into downward dog. And then slowly walking your feet forward towards your hands, arriving at a comfortable forward fold. We'll inhale to come halfway up, reaching the ribs forward. Exhale to empty and sink back down. And inhale again, halfway up, ribs reaching forward. Exhale, empty the belly, spilling your torso back towards the floor. And one more time, inhale, reaching your heart forward, lengthening through the belly, and exhaling to settle back down. And you can take your hands to your opposite elbows and just dangle here for a moment, seeing if you can really let go of the whole length of the spine. So enough bend in your knees that we can soften the low back, the mid back, the upper back, the back of the neck. Kind of just let your head drip off the end of your spine like honey off the end of a spoon. And then allowing the hands to settle back towards the floor, pressing down through the feet, inhaling to come slowly up towards a tall stance, or pressing down through the legs, beginning to straighten up the legs, reaching the tailbone towards the heels, hug the belly in, lift the ribs, spread the shoulders wide, reach tall through the crown of the head. And next inhale, taking your arms up alongside your ears. Exhale to fold forward, bring the hands towards the floor. Inhaling halfway up, reaching the ribs forward. It'll exhale to soften, stepping your right foot back, bringing your right knee down to the floor. You can take padding under your knee here if you want it. Um, you can be on the knee for a little while. And just come up onto your fingertips. Let the hips sink a little bit lower. As you inhale, start to stretch the belly long, lift the chest, look up. Exhale to draw your hips back, beginning to straighten your left leg, flexing your left foot. Inhale again to come forward, sinking the hips low. See if you can find length into that right hip crease as you lift the heart. Exhale to pull the hips back, lengthening the left leg, flexing the left foot. And once more, inhaling to come forward, letting the hips sink, lift the heart high. Exhale to draw your hips back, and then we'll stay here and walk your hands closer towards you. Continuing to send your hips straight back. Maybe even look for a little bit of that tilt that we do in the cow shape. So the sits bones lifting away from the floor, reaching your ribs forward, away from your hips. Seeing if you can find less roundness in your low back. And then spread the shoulders wide from the ears. Look for spaciousness around your neck. Nice full breaths here. Specifically seeing if you can direct your breath into the back of your lungs, into the low back looping around the back of your left hip and then into the space of the left hamstring or even the left calf so that the breath can really comb through all of the areas where we feel that tug in the back body, especially in the back of the left leg. And then we'll bend the left knee, bring the weight forward, walk the hands to frame the left foot. Rooting through the hands, straightening your right leg, press the mat away from you, stepping back to plank, moving with your own breath, your path to downward dog. So you can take whatever vinyasa you like, maybe even just going straight back to downward dog if that's what you feel like you need. And then we'll inhale to reach the right leg up and back. Exhale to draw the knee into the chest. Step the right foot forward towards the hands, bringing your left knee down to the mat. Again, find padding if you like it. Settle the hips, and just coming up onto your fingerprints. And as you let the hips sink, inhale to stretch the belly long, lift the chest, look up. Exhale to pull the hips back, flexing your right foot. Look for length in the right leg. Inhale again to come forward, hips sink low, stretch long through the belly, heart high. Exhale to reach the hips back straightening out the right leg as much as you're able. 
And one more time, inhaling to come forward, sinking the hips. As you stretch through the front body, find space in your left hip crease. And exhale to draw the hips back, lengthening out the right leg, flexing the right foot. This time we'll stay for a few breaths here. You can walk your hands closer towards you. Keep reaching the hips back. Again, maybe that little bit of a tilt in the pelvis that allows you to lift your sits bones away from the earth. Find more breath and space in your low back. And send your heart forward, reach the shoulders wide. And again, be really specific about following that path of your breath, the back of the lungs, the low back, around the back of your right hip, into the hamstring, into the calf. Maybe the inhales can kind of just stretch out or broaden the spaces where we feel a tightness or a closeness. The exhales can allow those spaces to become softer, more at ease, more comfortably responsive to the stretch. And then we'll again bend the right knee, walk the hands forward. This time just stepping your left foot forward to meet the right. Inhale to come halfway up. Exhale to settle back down. Pressing into the feet. Find a long spine, so kind of a half lift shape, and then keep coming up. Reach your arms all the way up to the ceiling, nice tall stretch. Exhaling, hands to the center of the chest. We'll inhale to reach the arms up, stretching tall. Exhale, folding forward, bring the hands towards the floor. Inhale, halfway up, reaching your ribs forward. Exhale, softening, stepping the left foot back. And we'll inhale to reach the ribs forward. Exhale, taking your right arm up towards the ceiling. So moving into a twist here. Look for squareness in your hips. We'll lift the left hip a little bit. Press up through the back of the left thigh. See if you can sink your right hip. Reach your ribs forward as you inhale. Get longer through the torso. And then as you exhale, you can peel your right side ribs away from your right thigh, moving more into your twist. Nice wide stretch out through both of your arms, reaching down through your left hand as much as you stretch up through those right fingertips. And then as you exhale, you bring your right hand back down to the floor. Keeping your right foot where it is, just slowly start to straighten up that right leg. You could come up onto your fingertips again here, or if you have blocks or something block-like handy, you might come up onto blocks. See if you can take your right hip back and then both hips up as high as you're able. Find a, a sense of scissoring your legs towards each other. And then reaching your heart forward, get long through the low spine. With all of that length, see if you can fold a little bit more comfortably over that right leg. And just take a few steady breaths here. Again, sending your hips up high by squeezing through the inner lines of the legs to lift the pelvis. And as you exhale, scooping in through the belly, reaching your heart in the direction of your right big toe. Bending your right knee, placing your hands back towards the floor, and push down through the hands, careful step back to plank. Again, traveling with your own breath, your path to downward dog. Inhale to reach the left leg up and back. Exhale to hug the knee in towards the chest, stepping the left foot towards your hands. Inhale, the heart reaches forward. Exhale, the left arm up towards the ceiling. A few steady breaths here into this twisted shape. Pressing up through the back of your right thigh. Look for some buoyancy in your right hip. Reach the heart forward. And then as you exhale, hugging in through the belly, rolling your ribs away from your left thigh. More of that sense of the twist. And the arms reaching out really wide. And go straight up through your left fingers. You might let the left shoulder lean back a little bit, but try and go straight up with the reach of the arm. And exhale to let the left hand rest back towards the floor. And then straightening your left leg, still keeping it there between your hands. You might, again, come up onto your fingertips or use some support if you have it, if it's helpful. Inner line of the legs squeezing towards center. Stay high on the ball of your back foot. Send your left hip back. Send both hips up as high as you're able. And then reaching your heart forward as you exhale with a long spine, seeing if you can melt over that left leg. And this quality of finding lift in the hips here will be very helpful to us when we arrive at an attempt to balance on the hands. You can already start to imagine that your pelvis 
is not too heavy, that your body in general is not as heavy as you like to think that it is. We'll slowly bend the left knee, stepping the right foot forward. Inhale to come halfway up. Exhale to settle and fold. Pressing down through the feet. Inhale, long spine. Come all the way up to standing. Nice tall stretch. Exhaling the hands to the center of the chest. And inhale again to reach your arms up tall. Exhale, folding forward, bringing the hands towards the floor. Inhaling halfway up, reach the ribs forward. Exhale, soften, planting your hands. You can step back or maybe even hop back, moving with your own breath, finding again your own path to downward dog. We'll meet there. And when we're thinking about the lightness of the body, we tend to think like the body is a heavy structure made up of heavy bones. But if you look at the skeleton, it's not really like the bones are actually um, attached to each other specifically. They're kind of all floating in little capsules of muscle and other connective tissues. We could even say like your whole skeleton, it's, it's just kind of floating inside the sac of your skin. And because there's structural integrity, the whole thing stands up, but it's not really heavy. We just have to figure out the balance when we wanna change the way that we orient ourselves to the floor. And with your next inhale here, we can reach the right leg up and back, nice and high. Exhale, draw the knee into the chest, step the right foot forward towards your hands. Bring your left foot flat to the floor, and then we'll inhale to reach the arms up into warrior one. And exhaling to come into warrior two, arms out wide, about shoulder height. You might adjust the feet here so you can find a wide space across the front of your pelvis. And then we'll straighten the right leg. Inhale to reach the right arm forward. Exhaling the right arm down, left arm up, coming into triangle pose, taking a few steady breaths here. And sending your hips back, reaching your ribs forward to stretch out the sides of the body, rolling the left side ribs open. Again, going straight up with the reach of your left hand, even if we're letting that left shoulder settle back a little bit. And you might connect again to that sense of strength through the inner lines of your thighs so the heels kind of pull towards each other to help us find the path to the pelvic floor. And if we can find strength in the pelvic floor, then we can support the end of the spine in space. And maybe that allows us to stretch the other end of the spine, the part that's connected to your head, away from the root of the hips. And we'll inhale to come slowly back up to standing. Exhale to bend the right knee, warrior two. Inhale, reverse warrior, the right arm sweeping back. Exhaling to windmill the hands to the floor. Careful step back to plank. Again, traveling with your own breath, your path to downward dog. And then inhaling the left leg up and back. Exhaling, knee into the chest. Step the left foot forward. Right foot spins down flat to the floor. Arms reaching up on the inhale, warrior one. And exhaling into warrior two, adjusting the feet as you need to, widening through the front of the pelvis. It's straightening your left leg. Inhale, the left arm reaching forward. Exhale, the left arm down, the right arm up, coming into triangle pose. And taking a few steady breaths here. And see if you can find that magnetism between the heels so that we get the hug through the inner lines of the legs, that connection to the pelvic floor, root the end of the spine and the hips, and then stretching your ribs, the crown of your head, away from that root. And still finding that gentle spiraling quality that allows us to stack the right side ribs over the left. So your heart nice and wide open. And we'll press into the feet, inhaling to come back up. Exhaling to bend your left knee, warrior two. Inhale, reverse warrior, left arm sweeping back. Exhaling to windmill the hands down to the floor. Stepping back to plank, again traveling your own path. Once more, remembering your breath, remembering to follow the guidance of your breathing. The end of your next exhale, you can bend your knees, looking forward, we'll step the feet or hop the feet up towards the hands. Inhale to come halfway up, exhaling to settle back down. Pressing into the feet, inhaling to come all the way up, arms reaching tall. Exhaling, hands to the center of the chest. Good. You might step your feet here relatively close together if you're able. 
We're going to come up onto the balls of the feet, so coming into diver's pose here, lifting your heels high, 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 and then starting to tip at the hips so that you can take your torso parallel to the floor and reach your fingers back by your hips. And if you took my class, live class on Saturday, um, then you'll know this is my favorite pose right now because it's reminding us that we need to get comfortable in this teetering on the edge. We're about to dive into a pool of something. <laughs> Who knows if it's going to be hot or cold or what, but we have to be excited about being in this moment before arriving. See if you can let the heels be a little bit lifted, a little bit more higher. Inner line of the legs zipped up to give you more strength. Reach the heart forward. And then exhale to settle your heels to the floor. Bend the knees, sit the hips low. Reach your arms up alongside your ears, coming into chair pose. Yeah. And we'll exhale to fold hands to the floor. Legs begin to straighten. Inhale, halfway up, reach your ribs forward. Exhale, planting the hands, step or hop back, finding your way again to downward dog, following the rhythm of your own breathing. We'll inhale to reach the right leg up and back. Exhale, knee to chest, step the right foot forward towards your hands. Left foot flat to the floor, inhaling to come up, warrior one. At this time, exhaling to spill your weight into your right foot. You might tiptoe that left foot in a little bit closer. Moving into warrior three, lifting your left leg parallel to the floor, if you're able. Um, seeing especially if you can lift through the inner line of the leg, so we still feel, again, where the center line of the body is. Engagement through the center line of the body. Hug in through the belly. Reach your heart farther forward as you stretch back through the ball of your left foot. And then we'll exhale into standing split. Hands come down towards the floor. Tipping your weight more into the ball of your right foot. See if you can let that left leg float up a little bit higher. So kind of like a seesaw. The more you stretch forward and down through the torso, the more the left leg can float almost on its own. And then we just add a little bit of left uh, effort, especially in the inner line of the left thigh, to bring the leg up higher. And bending your right knee, big step back, landing in warrior two. We'll windmill the arms up on the inhale. Settle the hips and the shoulders as you exhale. Next inhale, reverse warrior, the right arm sweeping back. Exhaling to bring right forearm to your right thigh or right hand to the floor. Left arm forward alongside the left ear. Extended angle pose. Seeing if you can find a good bend in your right knee so that the right knee, right toes are pointing in the same direction. Right knee aligned over your right ankle. Wrap your right hip in towards the midline of your body and then roll your left side ribs open. A little bit more of a sense of a twist here. And then to turn the heart towards the light. Breathing into the space of your left side body. Good. Pressing down through the feet, we'll inhale to come back to reverse warrior, long stretch through your right side. Exhaling to windmill your hands down to the inside of your right foot. Tuck your left toes under, wiggle your right foot more to the right. And then walking your hands forward. And press your hands really firmly forward and down into the floor. Send weight towards your left heel. If you need a modification here, you could bring your left knee down to the floor. Breathing into the backs of your shoulders, so you're getting in that ballooning quality in the upper back as you inhale. Exhaling to let your hips sink low and see if you can squeeze your right thigh close into your right side. So you're keeping some sense of structure. And then this hug through the midline. Activity in the inner right thigh, even as we go looking for softness. And then you can slowly walk your hands to the inside of your right foot. We'll step the left foot forward to the outside of the left hand, coming into a squat, so toes can turn outwards. Sit the hips low, bringing your hands together. See if you can shift weight towards the outer edges of your feet as you let the hips settle, lift up through the center of the heart. And then exhaling the hands back down to the floor, lifting your hips to lengthen up the legs. We'll wiggle the feet in. And half lift on your next inhale, reaching the heart forward. Exhale to melt back down, planting the hands, step or hop back. Again, your own path to downward dog. Next inhale, reaching the left leg up and back. 
Exhale, knee to chest, stepping your left foot towards your hands. Right foot flat to the floor. Inhaling up to warrior one. And exhaling, shifting weight into your left foot until your right toes in, until you're ready to launch. Right leg lifting high, especially drop through the inner line of the leg. And then stretch back through the ball of the foot. Hug in through the belly, reach forward through your heart. A little bit more space in your torso. And we'll exhale, the hands coming down towards the floor, moving into standing split. Seeing again if you can tip more weight into the ball of your left foot, reach forward and down through your torso so that you can seesaw that right leg up a little bit higher, especially lifting through the inner line of the leg. Try and keep a square shape in your hips. And then bending your left knee, big step back with your right foot, windmilling the arms up into warrior two as you inhale. Exhale to soften the hips and the shoulders. Inhale, reverse warrior, left arm sweeping back. Exhale, left forearm to your left thigh or left hand to the floor, right arm alongside the right ear, extended side angle. And then paying attention to that bend in your left knee. Some knee toes pointing in the same direction, the left knee aligned over the left ankle, the left hip hugging in towards the center line, and then the right side body rolls open. It's a little bit of a sensation of a twist. Root through the outer edge of your right foot and then stretch your right fingers away from that root for more space and more breath in your right side body and your right side ribs. And then we'll press down through the feet, inhaling to come back to reverse warrior, stretching through your left side, exhaling to bring the hands down to the inside of your left foot. Wiggle your left foot to the left, come onto the ball of the right foot, walking your hands forward. And then pressing firmly forward and down through your hands, stretching back through your right heel, breathing into the backs of your shoulders as you inhale. Exhale to settle the hips as deeply as you can without losing the integrity of the shape. Keep hugging that left thigh close in towards you so the inner line of the leg is strong. And with all of that containment, can you find a little bit more softness? Can you settle into this enclosed little home that you've built for yourself. Then we'll walk the hands back in towards the inside of the left foot, stepping the right foot forward to the outside of the right hand. Sit the hips low, and the toes can turn outwards, moving into your squat, hands towards the heart, shifting weight to the outer feet so that the knees can broaden wide, hips a little bit deeper, heart a little bit higher. And then exhaling the hands down towards the floor, lengthening up your legs, wiggle the feet in, nice and close. We'll inhale to come halfway up, reach the ribs forward. Exhale to settle down. Pressing into the feet, inhale all the way up, arms reaching for the ceiling. Exhaling the hands to the center of the chest. And we'll do one more round. So you're coming up onto the balls of the feet, arms by your sides, lifting the heels as high as you're able. And then tipping at the hip so that you can reach your heart forward. Fingers stretching back by your hips. Keep the heels floating away from the floor. Be on the tippy, tippy, tippy edge of where you can be just before falling into the unknown. And then we'll settle the heels, bend the knees, sit the hips low, arms sweeping up alongside your ears. Utkatasana. And as you exhale, folding hands to the floor, legs beginning to straighten. Inhale, halfway up, reach the heart forward. Exhale, planting your hands, stepping or hopping back. Again, your own path to downward dog, following your breathing. Inhale, right arm, oh, sorry, right leg reaching up and back. Exhale, drawing the knee into the chest. Step the right foot forward. Left foot flat to the floor. We'll inhale, the arms sweeping up. And exhaling again to warrior three. So you're shifting your weight into your right foot. Left leg lifting away from the floor. And then find some softness in your right knee. We're going to start to come up with the torso, bringing your left knee up towards your chest, and then climbing your left thigh over your right so we can come into eagle pose. Maybe the left foot hooks around behind the right calf. We'll bring the arms forward and cross your right arm over your left, bending the elbows, palms together, or backs of the hands together, or hands to your shoulders. Really hugging your midline here with everything you got. So the inner line of the legs squeezing towards center, arms hugging in towards each other. And then see if you can press the elbows forward. Keep your elbows lifted away from your chest, still spreading the shoulders wide. 
Maybe sit the hips a little bit deeper. Keep squeezing in through the thighs. And then from here, maybe you can begin to fold. So we're tipping the torso forward, eventually perhaps bringing the elbows in front of the knees, unless you have a pregnant belly, which is getting in the way, or another kind of belly that's getting in the way. They're all good. And, and then we'll slowly come back up, unwinding, taking a big step back and moving into warrior two. So we'll spread the front of the pelvis wide. Good. Now straightening your right leg, turning your right toes in so that the toes are all pointing in the same direction. We'll bring the hands to the hips. Inhale to lift the center of the chest. Exhaling to fold. As you fold, really feel how that low belly is scooping in to allow more crease at the hips. And then bringing your hands down to the floor. We'll inhale to reach the ribs forward, something like a half lift. Exhaling to draw in again through the lowest part of the belly so that you can fold back into your hip creases, coming into your deepest fold here. And we'll just take a few steady breaths here, breathing up the backs of your legs, lifting your sits bones as you inhale. Exhaling to keep hugging in through the lowest belly and see in, in that moment you can kind of stretch your ribs down away from your hips. Again, the hips are light moving up into space. The ribs are rooting towards the earth. You might tilt your weight a little bit farther forward into the balls of your feet. You can activate the inner lines of your legs here again. So we're rolling the thigh bones slightly inwards to send the inner thighs back and apart. It helps us to widen the sits bones. Helps us to fold a little bit more into the hip creases. Great opportunity here to let your head go. Whatever you're holding onto physically, in the neck, in the face. Also, whatever contents of the brain you're holding onto might spill away. And then we'll inhale to come back up about halfway, maybe just up onto your fingertips. Exhale to bring the hands to the hips. Inhaling to come all the way back up to standing. Turning your right toes forward, bending the right knee, bring the arms out shoulder height, warrior two. Inhaling, reverse warrior, stretching back through the right side body. Exhaling, hands to the mat, framing the right foot. We'll step back to plank, again, your path to downward dog. And then we'll inhale to reach the left leg up and back. Exhale, left foot towards the hands, right foot flat to the floor. Arms sweeping up as you inhale. Exhaling to tip into warrior three, right leg floating away from the mat, lifting especially through the inner thigh. Good. And then a little bit of softness in your left knee, lifting the torso, hugging that right thigh up and towards your chest so that you can climb the right thigh over the left, coming into eagle pose. And maybe that right foot hooks around behind the calf or just parking it to the outside. Arms coming forward, the left arm crossing over the right, bending the elbows. Find the shape for your hands that works for you. And then see again if you can use everything you got to hold that midline, inner legs, core strong, elbows squeezing towards each other. And then press the elbows away from the chest so we have that wide space in the upper back. Room for your breath between your shoulder blades. Maybe you can lift your elbows but still spread the shoulders wide. Maybe finding the forward fold here. So the hips reaching back as the heart stretches forward. You know, it's coming to your own edge. Maybe eventually the elbows park in front of the knees. And then we'll slowly come back up, unwinding the legs. Big step back, unwinding the arms, moving into warrior two, arms out shoulder height. And then we'll straighten the left leg, turn the left toes towards the right and turn the toes are slightly inward, so the outer edges of your feet are parallel to the short edges of your mat. You can bring your hands behind your back, interlace your fingers. Inhale to lift the center of the chest, and exhale again to spill your heart forward and down, coming into your forward fold. So once more, leaning weight into the balls of the feet, breathing up the backs of your legs. See if you can again find all of that activity in your legs that helps you find more buoyancy or lift in the pelvis more weightlessness in your pelvis. And that wide space at the base of the pelvis, the inner thighs pressing back and apart to open up the sits bones, which allows us to find more of this folding into the hip creases on the front body. So low belly scooping in as you exhale. And see if you can just drop your torso towards that space between your thighs. 
Maybe allowing the arms to settle a little bit more away from your back, just to whatever edge is comfortable for you. And then again, letting go of the head, both literally and metaphorically. And lose everything that's in your head for just a moment. And then we'll press down through the feet. Inhale to come all the way back up. Exhaling, warrior two, left toes forward, arms out wide. Inhaling, reverse warrior, the left arm sweeping back. Good, we'll exhale the hands down to the inside of the left foot. Wiggle the left foot out to the left. Step your right foot forward to the outside of your right hand. I'm gonna keep the feet kind of like mat width apart, so nice and wide, and with the toes pointing straight forward. And then bending your knees to about 90 degrees if you're able. So seeing if you can bring your hips in line with your knees. And now reach your arms forward. Keep sending your hips back as you stretch forward through your fingers. Hug the inner thighs towards your torso. Like you want to squeeze your own body with your legs. Like you're a, a lemon and you want to get all of the juice out with the power of your legs. Hips reach farther back. Arms reach farther forward. Nice big breath in here. And then exhaling to bring the fingers down, straightening up your legs, wiggle your feet in. We'll inhale to come into a half lift. Exhale, nice heavy fold. Keep some bend in the knees and inhale just to roll up towards standing, dangling the arms and the head until the very end. And then finding a nice tall stance. Good. So look at um, an arm balance, which we should be warm and well prepared for. Um, it's called Titibasana, so firefly pose. And maybe lots of you know this, but I'll just give a quick demonstration in case it's new. So we're gonna start with the feet a little bit wider than hip width apart. If you don't know the pose, you probably wanna watch until we've gotten through all the steps and then I'll lead you through it again. And bend the knees and then we're gonna bring the body in between the thighs, just kind of like as we had. But now I'm gonna see if I can park my shoulders a little bit more behind my knees. Sometimes it helps just to hold onto the ankles and see if you can get your shoulders in as much as you're able behind your knees. And then the fingers come down to the floor, pointing in towards your heel. Make sure your thumbs are also pointing forward in the direction of your toes and your fingers. And then we bend the elbows, we sit the hips towards those elbows, and then we squeeze with everything we got towards the midline. If we let the inner legs go, the pose doesn't work. Also grab the floor with your finger pads so that you don't fall too far backwards. Maybe we're able to eventually lift the feet off the floor. You could just cross your ankles. Again, really squeezing the legs against your arms. From here, if you feel steady, you might start to straighten out the legs. Maybe pressing the two hands, getting a little bit more lightness in the hips, seeing if you can lift away from the floor. Okay, so if you're not already there, we'll try it again. If you're already there, hold it forever. It's seeing so again, feet wider than hip width apart. If we can get the elbows folded in behind the knees, fingers coming behind the heels, pointing in the same direction as your toes. Make sure that thumb is also pointing forward. Squeeze the thighs against your legs. Maybe you can wiggle the feet in a little bit closer towards each other just to cross the ankles. And kind of think about sitting on that shelf of the backs of your arms. If you find that you fall backwards, think more about dragging the fingers into the floor to give you a little bit more grip. And if you feel comfy, maybe the legs can straighten out or not. And then eventually you can just sit down one way or the other, either by falling or by intentionally <laughs> coming down onto your bed. Bringing your legs forward, you can just have the knees bent, fingers behind you. Give the legs a little bit of a shake out by rocking them side to side. You just feel the thigh bones rolling through the hip sockets. Let go of some of that activity in the inner line of the legs. So you feel how the outer leg drops outwards. Okay. And then coming to a seat, you can interlace your fingers. And we'll uh, just make like really super easy figure eight kind of shapes roll into the wrist. So first in one direction. And then in the other direction. And then you can release the hands, interlace the fingers in the opposite order, so different pinky in front, and then again, just like super easy rolling through in one direction. And 
and then in the other. And then give your hands a little bit of a shake out. And then we'll also just roll through the shoulders a few times to relax the shoulders. So you can bring your fingertips onto the tops of the shoulders. As you inhale, you can roll your shoulders forward, or sorry, your elbows forward and up. And then exhale to spread the elbows down and back. So like you're painting big circles with your elbows, inhaling forward and up. Exhaling down and back. And just go a few more times, making the circles as wide and as fluid as you're able, so making sure they're smooth, which means it's going more slowly than you first chose to go. And then we'll change direction. So the elbows sweep back and up as you inhale, nice wide wings. Exhale forward and down. And just keep going again a few more times, your own fluid pace, rolling through that whole shoulder socket. And just seeing if you can feel a smooth path the whole way around. Good. And then releasing the hands down by the sides. From here, you can bring the soles of the feet back to the floor and just find your way slowly down onto your back. Good. So we'll bring the soles of the feet about hip width apart, the heels relatively close into the sits bones. And arms down by your sides, pressing down through the feet, coming up into a bridge pose. You interlace your fingers, snuggle your shoulder blades close in underneath you. Press down through the backs of the arms, press down through the feet so you can lift your hips up nice and high. Reaching your tailbone in the direction of your knees and stretching your chest in the direction of your chin to lengthen out the center body. And we're finding space here in the inner line of the shoulders, so that part where your arm connects into the front of the chest. And this is a good counterbalance here, really you can feel that squeezing of the shoulder blades together wide across the chest, long through your belly, find space in the hip creases and the tops of the thighs, just flushing out all those areas with deep cleansing breath. And then exhaling to let the hips sink back towards the floor. From here we'll cross the right ankle just above the left knee, let the right knee kind of settle away from your body. And then folding the left thigh closer in, reach your right arm between your legs, left arm around to the outside, and loop your hands around the back of your thigh, or looping your fingers around the front of your left shin. And seeing if we can breathe the right knee slightly away from the body on your in-breath. And then folding into the left hip crease on your out-breath. And once more, this is not a forcefulness with the arms but rather a listening to the wisdom of your breathing, to the wisdom of your own body, so that you can find the shape without any kind of struggle. So it feels like wherever we arrive is somewhere that we're meant to be. And then slowly releasing that left foot back to the floor. Keep, keep the right ankle crossed above your left knee. Bring your arms at about shoulder height. And then we're just going to start to tip the hips so that that outer left leg can come down towards the floor and the sole of the right foot can come towards the floor. So we're keeping the right knee reaching up in the direction of the ceiling. And then maybe let the right hip settle more towards the floor behind you. So there's a little bit of a twist here, but also some sensation of stretch through the outer right hip. I'm just breathing into both of those sensations.
slowly coming back up, we'll place the right foot back to the floor. Cross the left ankle just above your right knee. Scoop the leg in towards you. Left arm reaching through, right arm around to the outside. Some hold of your right thigh or your right shin. And on the inhales, guide the left knee just slightly away from the torso. The out breaths, fold the right thigh closer in towards you. And we're feeling some stretch through the outer left hip. Maybe you feel it somewhere else. Your body will always let you know where the shortest chain of muscles are. And that could be different in different bodies. Slowly releasing that right foot back to the floor. Keep the left ankle crossed where it is, and then we'll drop the right leg over to the right, the left sole of the foot meeting the floor, the left knee still directed up towards the ceiling, the arms out. And settle your left shoulder, or maybe let that left hip also feel more heavy towards your mat. So we get a little bit of a sense of a twist, but also that stretch through the outer left hip. so that the breath tells us what we might need to change to make the shape more comfortable. Maybe we actually need to come out of the shape. Maybe we need a different shape. Your body will know and your body will tell you if you are willing to listen. for a moment into your chest and rock a little bit side to side, massaging your back against the floor. Just for a little moment, becoming a small seed. And then releasing the legs and allowing yourself to expand and grow outwards into Shavasana. So you could take the legs straight on the mat or again, if you prefer to have bent knees, you can have the soles of the feet to the floor or find something bolster-like to prop up your knees so they're just a little bit bent. Arms by your sides, the thumbs rolling away from your center line. Relax through the inner legs, relax through the inner arms. Relax through the deeper belly, through the chest, through the throat, through the center line of your face.
Just let yourself be completely heavy here. Have you ever seen a seed germinating or a rendition of a seed germinating? The first thing it does is it splits down the middle. I think Shavasana is kind of that germination stage. Something about to happen. We're about to come back into life. We're about to use all of that energy and intelligence that we've gathered in our practice to grow into something new. But first, we have to rest deep beneath the earth and we have to allow ourselves to gather moisture and dampness and we have to split down the middle. Stay here for a few more steady, slow moments. There's some kind of seed coating or shell or skin that we can leave behind as we make our way back into this new life. Start to find more conscious breath, little movements in your fingers and your toes. And then bringing your arms alongside your ears and stretch up through the stems of your fingers, down through the roots of your toes. Exhaling to bend your knees, rolling onto your right. Finding your way slowly up towards a comfortable seat. And we'll just land for a few minutes in this comfortable seat. So you can find something cross-legged or whatever works for you. Eyes closed, sitting up nice and tall. Let the shoulders relax away from your ears. Let your arms be heavy. Let your hips be heavy. Gather some of that integrity of the stem up through your torso so that your ribs can be lifted, your heart can be lifted, crown of the head reaching tall. And then bringing your hands together at the center of your chest, and thank yourself for your efforts today. Thank you for joining me. So get off of your computer and go find something in nature to look at. <laughs> Please, see you soon.